If you like the video, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Welcome to Pull My Focus, Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we bring you the inside tips on making great digital films and videos. And here at Pixel Valley Studio, we use the Adobe suite of software for our post-production. Premiere Pro being my daily driver for doing pretty much all of the editing work. Now this is great, but it comes at a cost, and it might be a cost that you're not willing to pay or you just don't want to. I mean, what if you just simply want to make videos for your YouTube channel or put something together for a vacation video or something more simple? Today, I'm going to give you my impressions of a few different uh, video packages that are available for from free to paid. Also, we'd like to thank one of our regular viewers, Martin, for uh, politely asking us to show a little bit of humility and <laughs> give our opinion about editors that may not cost so much. So, thanks Martin. All right, here we are at the desk and the webcam. So my approach, just so you know, what we're doing here is I'm separating the apps into two categories. One is totally free and the other one's mostly free. Um, totally free means that the application is free to download, free to use, but no licenses, no in-app purchases, no upsells or anything. The creators intend for the program to be used for free. And uh, other than that, there's no obligation for you to pay outside of maybe a donation link like to um, Patreon or something like that. The mostly free option it means that there, there may be costs involved. There may be a paywall, there may be a trial period that expires and then you have to pay. Um, there may be in-app purchases. So that's the mostly free option. I'm gonna call this a roundup as opposed to a review because I gave myself one hour exactly to see if I could figure out the program. So I fired up the program and I set a clock to go one hour. And in that time, I ignored any tutorials that popped up because I wanna see if, I, if the interface is intuitive enough for me to get through my task. Now, I'm a Premiere Pro editor, so I'm going to look at it from the view of a Premiere Pro editor, but I don't give demerits for something, a program that doesn't copy Premiere Pro directly. In fact, if it uses a unique interface and it seems cool to me, then you get points for that. I also, I recreated the same project over and over again, not exactly, but I'm using a project that has what I feel is gonna be basic things that you're gonna need um, to get through an editing uh, process of something like adding transitions, creating an assembly, uh, placing voiceovers, adding graphics and text. And then I look to see if there's anything that I can do some sweetening with like color correction, color grading, um, noise reduction, compression, audio things. All right. So that's the focus. That's how I approached looking at these apps. Without further ado, let's start with the first app, which is OpenShot. My first impression of OpenShot reminded me of iMovie. It has a sleek looking interface and a somewhat unique timeline layout. Tracks aren't divided into audio and video. They're simply elements that can be stacked on top of each other. My initial fear is that an interface such as this could get very confusing with larger projects with many clips all over the timeline, but we'll see. My assembly process was fairly smooth. Things started to get a little hairy when I discovered that my clip preview and the timeline sequence preview share the same window. I prefer them to be in separate visible windows. Having two different windows to view clips and the timeline simultaneously doesn't seem to be available, although I could be wrong, I couldn't figure out a way to make it work. Using it further, it looks like OpenShot is geared towards super simple workflows. The interface rewards a very loosey-goosey way of editing where accuracy isn't the focus. Auto snapping features didn't seem to be on by default. Frame accurate editing is available, but requires an intermediate dialogue pop-up to dial in the numbers. Text editing is always the hardest part to implement cleanly in any editor. OpenShot has a somewhat constrained text editing process where the text is created in a separate window and an SVG file is generated, which you can then overlay on your video. The extra steps like these only increase the amount of time it takes to make more complex text overlays. And to do any animated text, you'll need to know how to use Blender as OpenShot supports animations created in it. Then there were the technical issues. With my machine, which is a Mac, and an AMD Radeon 7 and 32 gigs of RAM, I couldn't get smooth playback. The e unicycle, Segway 9 box. Getting the hang of it. Mike is gonna help me shoot some stuff. The video and audio stuttered on the timeline. 
Coming from a Premiere Pro background, I found OpenShot very difficult to adjust to. Certain features require looking at the tutorial to master. But if you're new to editing, OpenShot may be easier to digest. Still, I would recommend looking elsewhere. Shot Cut. Shot Cut uses a more traditional timeline layout. Videos on top and audios on the bottom. Unless the clip is combined AV, then it shows them together. Once again, this is a single interface where the clip preview and the timeline preview share the same window space. There may be other ways to configure your workspace that I'm not aware of. I tend to use as many windows and monitors as I can, so this kind of interface doesn't really work for me. Some cool items of note that are in Shot Cut are the ability to turn on color scopes and essential audio effects like compression, which allow for you to add the polish you're gonna need for those videos. I could not find any of the transitions in my hour time limit. I mean, it must be just me. I'm guessing that they're buried in the effects area. I'm not a big fan of editing software that requires the use of effects for everything. For example, transformation tools, in my opinion, should be inherent properties of all video clips. I should be able to click on something and immediately edit the scale, rotation, etc. Shotcut has me going into the effects bin to add rotation and scale effects to perform these operations. This eats up valuable time and you end up having tons of effects attached to every clip in the timeline. The text editing features are a slight step above open shot, but still a bit clunky. I ran out of time trying to figure out how to apply my new text after I created it. You might have better luck after reading the online help. Shotcut didn't mess up my flow that much. And this app is so lightweight that it'll run almost anything. I mean, I've heard people running Shotcut on a Raspberry Pi. It's small and nimble. If you're a beginner with editing software, Shotcut is worth taking a look at, with the tutorials, of course. Olive. I'll just start this one out by saying Olive is amazing. It's also an early build and still in development. The version I used as of this recording was Alpha 0.1.0, but what I found was simply wonderful and shows much potential. The developers of Olive appear to be building a free alternative to Premiere Pro. The interface seems very familiar to any Premiere user. So now I have my two windows, one for previewing media and one for previewing my sequence. Many shortcuts match Premiere Pro. Creating my assembly was lightning fast. Video clips come with transform effects built in, which is awesome. Audio clips are born with volume and pan already accessible. There is a keyframe system in place, so I was able to simulate audio ducking as well as create moving graphics. I did not see any scopes for doing color work, and the only video transition I saw was cross dissolve, but I guess they're working on it. The audio tool set needs to be expanded, of course. There is an interface to use your own VST plugins also, which is a great feature that I didn't see in any of the other free editors. Text creation slash editing, once again, is a little better than the other apps reviewed so far. It did not take me the entire hour to know that Olive, which, while not feature rich, is extremely easy to use and potentially powerful. Yes, it is alpha. Yes, it does lack many features currently, but with hopefully continued development Olive will be a strong competitor to Premiere Pro, and one worth looking into. Video Pad. To use all the features of Video Pad, you have to purchase a license. As of this video, it's less than $99, so there you go. Video Pad has a clean interface. On my initial run, it seemed fairly easy to use. In its default configuration, there was a shared window once again for clips and sequence, which may or may not be good for you. I like the library effects and transitions that come with VideoPad. There are more than enough things here to do the basics and even more for fancier edits. Some items of note, when I tried to add a music file that was in a uh, .m4a format, VideoPad didn't recognize it, so I had to convert it to an MP3. It starts to make me wonder what other file types it can't handle. Not a huge deal, but slightly inconvenient. Speaking of audio, it didn't seem to have any track-based editing, which is something that I haven't seen in many of the free editors. 
I could be wrong, but it seems like I have to add effects to individual clips instead of some way adding them to an entire track like Premiere has in its audio track mixer. Importing graphics was easy. Sizing and moving was fairly simple. The text editing functions were still in a separate window, separate from the sequence. I could not move the text from the sequence view, only in the clip preview mode. This could make placing text a bit cumbersome. VideoPad also supports keyframes, although I didn't do a deep dive into how they're used. All in all, VideoPad seems like a very competent editing package. This is a package I could recommend for the sub $100 price point. HitFilm Express. HitFilm Express is the free level of FX Home Limited's popular HitFilm software. The idea here is you get what you pay for, literally. HitFilm is a very strong editing platform, but to get all the power, you need to upgrade to the full version. Features like noise reduction, audio compression, color correction, color scopes, and many others are behind a paywall. If you choose to pay for single items alone, HitFilm could get very expensive. Fortunately, there are package deals available from $9 to $39. I won't go too much into detail here, mostly because HitFilm is very easy to use and very easy to learn. If you're a Premiere Pro user, it'll be a breeze to jump in and ramp up into a project. It has very good text creation workflow, allowing you to type text directly on the preview screen and manipulate it, very similar to Premiere Pro. The only downside is the cost, which like I mentioned, could get expensive. The website often has huge discounts and deals available, so definitely check on those. I highly recommend HitFilm Express if you're serious about getting serious about becoming a video editor. Adobe Premiere Rush. Adobe has a version of Premiere Pro called Premiere Rush. This is a scaled down version that not only works on desktop, but also on iPhone and Android. Anything created in Rush can be imported into Premiere Pro later if desired. Rush is a great basic video editor. I was able to install it on my phone, capture video on the same phone, import the video and some free music from the Rush music library and edit a complete video, all without even touching my desktop computer. Afterwards, I could load Rush on my desktop or laptop and refine it some more. All assets are uploaded to the cloud, making it super simple to bounce between your computer and your phone. The Adobe Premiere Rush free starter plan is available to anyone with a free Creative Cloud membership. This plan allows you to download and use Premiere Rush on desktop, iOS, and Android devices. With this plan, you get the full functionality of Premiere Rush, and you also get to export up to three videos. If you decide to upgrade, you pay the monthly subscription fee, which as of this recording is $9 per month. This gives you 100 gigabytes of cloud storage, Adobe fonts, Adobe portfolio, and Adobe Spark. DaVinci Resolve. Now we're not listing this under free, even though technically it is free to download and use. DaVinci Resolve is more than just a video editor. It's a full audio suite, a motion graphics editor, a color correction and grading suite, and a video editor. So in a word, it's huge. This makes it one of the most powerful competitors to the Adobe suite of tools available today. In fact, many Adobe Premiere Pro editors also use DaVinci Resolve for color correction. DaVinci Resolve deserves a video all its own, maybe even a series of videos. But make no mistake, it is not an open source package. Blackmagic has the right to end free support at any time although it would be unlikely for them to do so. If you want the Pro package, which gives you advanced features such as multi-user collaboration, dozens of Resolve effects and Fairlight effects plugins, HDR grading, film grain, blur, mist effects, etc., you have to plunk down $2.99. But once you pay that, you're all set. This isn't a subscription service. You might have to pay for some future updates and features, but there are no monthly fees. Well, that's gonna do it for our roundup of free to mostly free software for editing for your videos. Hopefully you find something that you can get started, jump in and be creative and just start outputting stuff like, you know, us other content creators. Thanks for watching. Check out pullmyfocus.tv for our companion articles to these videos. 
and uh, maybe let us see some of the stuff you're working on. We'd love to check it out. I'd love to see, you know, maybe I'll learn some stuff too. All right, guys. Happy editing. <laughs>